In June of 2000, Scott graduated from grade five. Now they were in a school that only went up to grade five, so they would be going to a different school in grade six. So as a special year-end trip, the class took a trip to Toronto. I was working as a school bus driver at the time, and I was privileged to drive that trip. So we went to the Royal Ontario Museum, we had supper at the old spaghetti factory in downtown Toronto, and then we closed the evening off by attending the Lion King Live at the Princess of Wales Theatre. The show was the most amazing performance that I have ever experienced. The music was amazing, the acting was incredible, the costumes, the costumes were just out of this world. It was just overwhelming. And it drew you in emotionally. It was an incredible experience that has lived on with, inside me and that I've never forgotten. Whenever I think of Lion King, I think of that performance. It was just simply amazing. And I thought of that experience, that performance, as I was thinking this week about experiencing God. In his book called Experiencing the Presence of God, A.W. Tozer writes, deep in the soul of every person is a longing for the presence of God. Deep in the soul of every person is a longing for the presence of God. We don't want to only know God, to know about him, but we desire to experience. We desire to feel that he is here with us. We are created as emotional beings. We are created as spiritual beings. We like to feel things. We laugh, we cry, we get happy, we express joy and delight. Just watch the little children jumping around and you see those emotions. We feel sorrow, we feel grief, and at, at their best, our re emotions reflect God. We are made in the image of God, and when our emotions that are, are at their best, they reflect God's emotions. And we desire to encounter God. We desire to experience God with us here at church, through our devotional time, when we pray, in our daily lives, whatever we may be doing, we desire to experience and know that God is with us. And I've heard people say, but I don't feel God. Why doesn't God speak to me? And I've heard people say that they're leaving the church because they don't encounter God. They don't experience God there. Today, more and more people say that they're spiritual. You hear that word a lot, spirituality. People say that they're spiritual but they're looking to other forms of spirituality to fill the void in their lives. And there's a lot out there, and it's not a spirituality that is connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we experience God? How do we hear God? How do we see God? One of my prayers as I prepare every week is that we will encounter God as we gather here together, that we will hear from God, that the Holy Spirit will be among us. But that's not something that I try to whip up as I prepare. In fact, I pray that I will not do that. I don't want something coming from Sharon. I desire the presence of the Holy Spirit to be here with us, touching us, speaking to our hearts, drawing us closer to the Lord. About a year ago, I participated in the Refresh, Refocus, Renew sessions uh, with MC Sask. And out of that, we are encouraged to deepen our walk with God. We are encouraged to increase our awareness of God's presence in our lives and to increase our openness to encounter God's presence with us individually and also collectively as we meet together. Now, how do we increase that? How do we do that? And we're all different, so we will experience God in different ways. Well, today I want to focus again on the prayer that I encouraged us to join. I encouraged you to join me in praying each morning in 2018. I don't know if you've been doing that or not. I have been at Psalm 63, and I have found it to be such a blessing. It's a prayer that I believe will help us to become more aware of God's presence with us. So I want you to listen to the words again. 
O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of food, and with singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wing. I stay close to you. Your right hand holds me fast. David is running for his life when he writes those words. He's been betrayed by his son. He's been betrayed by very, very good friends. He's hiding in the deserts of Judea. He doesn't know if he's going to live or die. There's a very good chance he could die. And yet, what doesn't he do? He doesn't beg God to save his life. He doesn't cry out to God to make him king again. He doesn't ask God, why is this happening to me? Instead, he pours out his deepest longings and desires to God. Oh God, I want to know you. I want to know that you're here. I want to encounter you. I want to experience you. Oh God, you are my God alone. And I believe that as we pray Psalm 63 over and over, day by day, that we are opening ourselves to be changed. We are opening ourselves to allow the presence of God to draw near to us and to increase our openness to encounter the living Jesus. <coughs> and that we will hear the Holy Spirit speak to us. I want to lead us in a few things this morning that I'm hoping can be ways for us to open ourselves up to encounter God. First thing I want to do is read those verses again. And I encourage you to close your eyes as you listen. And maybe a word or a phrase will jump out at you, will catch your attention, it'll speak to you. And when I'm finished reading, let's just take a few minutes quietly to meditate on what that word or phrase was, and then quietly pray it back to God, our Father, as words of longing and desire to experience and encounter God more. So I'm going to read it first, and then we'll take a minute of silence. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied <coughs> as with the richest of food. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wing. I stay close to you. Your right hand holds me fast.
Amen. Anyone want to share anything? So I've been praying these verses since January. There's different phrases and different words that have grabbed my attention and that have given deeper expression to my longing for more of God. And they've also drawn me into the heart of God. And I just want to share a few of those with you this morning. First, think of the word thirst. Thirst. Thirst is a basic instinct. We need water to live. Think of times that you were maybe really, really thirsty. David's in a very dry desert. He probably is very thirsty. But he doesn't cry out for water. He cries out, My soul thirsts for you. My soul thirsts for you. I'm desperately thirsty, O oh God. But Lord, I need you more. As I was thinking about that, I thought, do I long for Jesus like that? Do we long for Jesus like that? More than anything else, do I want to? Do we want to? And again, I believe is that we pray these words day after day, over and over, that they work their way inside us. And that longing will grow and will become true. If you remember at Pentecost, I encourage us to let the wind remind us of the Holy Spirit, of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us, and to delight in God's presence with us and around us as we feel the wind. Today I encourage you, as you drink a glass of water, let it remind you of a greater thirst to know Jesus more, to, to know him near and close and present with you, and let it remind you that he is there. Second, mention singing a number of times in those verses. David was Israel's minstrel. He sang. He loved to sing. Music moves us. Music affects us. It affects us emotionally. You know, all know that I love to sing, and I've been spending time at the church every week playing the piano, singing love songs to God, songs that declare how great God is. And as I do that, I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit with me as I worship God in song. I felt him speaking to me. He's convicted me. I feel him abiding with me. David says, because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I love that picture. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings thought this week of the bird's nest that Janet has on her, on her deck. The baby birds are safe under the mama bird's wings. God is our helper, our protector. He's the one we can trust. We're safe with him. We can sing in the shelter, in the safety of his wings. But to be in the shelter of his wings, that means that we need to be there, that we need to draw close very close. Now some of you aren't singers, but even listening to music, music affects us. And if we listen to music, it can draw us into the presence of God. And I'm going to invite you now, we're going to sing two songs. Songs that I believe express God's love for us, and then a song that will invite us to express to, to the Lord how much we love Jesus and how much we long to be with him. So we're going to sing, Oh, how he loves you and me, which speaks of God's love for us, and then as the deer.
Last phrase I want to share with you is verse 5. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. I want you to think of the biggest and the best and the greatest buffet that you've ever eaten. Or maybe the most amazing meal. You think back and you think, that, now that was an amazing meal. And it left you happy, and it left you satisfied, and it left you content. There are numerous Bible verses that talk about heaven as a great banquet, great banquet free feast. And that, that picture expresses joy, the joy and the greatness and the generosity and the love and the presence of God. As David praises the Lord, as he places his hope and his trust in the Lord, he's satisfied as if he's eating the very best meal he could possibly have. Have you been smelling the baking bread this morning, off and on? Better than fresh homemade bread, more wonderful than the most scrumptious meal, placing our hope and our trust in God will satisfy us in a way that nothing else can. It will fill us with praise and it will bring us into the presence and the protection of the Lord. And as we live in the shadow of God's wing, we can say with David, I stay close to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Do we believe these words? Maybe you've sought after God and you've been disappointed. And it can be tempting to give up, to look to satisfy that deep longing that we have for the Lord in something else or somewhere else. But I want to encourage you to continue praying, continue meditating on these verses and others. In Jeremiah 29, 13, God promises you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Anyone who is thirsty, come to me. May, as I spend more time in the scriptures, seeking after God and his ways, more and more, as I pray this prayer, the other one I continue to pray day by day is the one from, from Psalms 25, Show me your ways, O Lord. More and more, I'm aware of Jesus with me. And that awareness increases. More and more, I tune into the ways of God. I hear his voice, and I'm satisfied. But you know what? I want more. I want to know him more. I want to sense that presence, that care in the shadow of his wings. John Ortberg uses the illustration of Waldo in his book about pursuing God. Where is Waldo? And Waldo is on every page. You just have to look for him. And John Ortberg encourages us to let every day, every moment of our lives be another page. That God is there. The scriptures tell us on every one of them. He's invisible. Maybe hard to see but he's find, findable. Proverbs 8, 17, God says, I love those who love me, and those who search for me will find me. Only in Jesus will we find the deepest satisfaction, that inner joy that we desire, and experience the presence of God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Oh God, you are our God alone, the one we seek, the one we desire. And I thank you that as we seek after you, we do find you, we do experience you, we do encounter you along the way. Sometimes at very unexpected places, sometimes surprisingly, but I thank you for your presence with us. 
Lord, may our awareness of you increase more and more. Our desire for you increase more and more. Lord, I pray that we may find that satisfaction. Lord, I pray for any among us, others that I think of, who have sought after God. Lord, I pray that you will continue to reveal yourself to us in different ways. We will know that you are there. Thank you for your word. Thank you especially for the psalms today, O oh God, the psalms that express so many different emotions. And yet when David was at a very, very, very bad time in his life, he cried out these words, words that we echo in our lives. Thank you for meeting with us here today. As we leave this place, I thank you that you go with us. I pray that you will guide our steps along the way. I pray, Lord, for opportunities to share the goodness and greatness of Jesus Christ with others around us in our words and in our actions. And I pray, O oh God, that you will bless us so that we may be a blessing to those around us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.